Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS and where wins meet. I'm going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we're going to take a look on your Radeon and Nvidia Power Render and at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now inside of the NVIDIA driver. So first of all, we're going to go to graphic global. In the global setting, the first one is DLSS override. Make sure that you click this one and you use the latest. You will always use the latest version of frame generation, rear reconstruction, and super resolution for your DLSS. So you're not going to wait on the developer to uh, just update their DLSS version. So this one is pretty cool to use. I don't recommend to use smooth motion, too much input lag in this game. And low latency mode definitely go with on. I'm locking my FPS at 237 because I have a 240 Hz uh, monitor and I want to stay in my G-Sync range. And the shader cache size, uh, by default, it will be 5 gig. Uh, I like to use 10 or 100 if you have the space on your disk. If you install a lot of game like 10, 15 and more, uh, you're going to make sure that you're always not recompiling your shader cache size because you don't have space in your folder. After that, in the system section, if you want to use G-Sync, this is where you're going to activate it. I like to activate it on full screen and window mode. Make sure that you select the proper screen. On the display properties, make sure that you're using your native resolution and the IS refresh rate available to your monitor. And I like to put 5% more in digital vibrance. Uh, it's a little bit better for your color saturation. So less gray when you're playing a game. The last one is the performance tab. I like to put my power maximum at 133. Uh, normally, I'm getting 5 to 7% boost in games or even benchmark like 3D Mark. But the thing is, you need space room on your uh, GPU. So, for an example, if you have already 85 degrees when you're playing a, a game uh, for your thermals, it will not do anything. But if you are at 60, the algorithm of NVIDIA is going to push more wattage to your card and you got to get longer boost clock so it can be beneficial for you. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Now let's go to Radian. So now for Radian card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. 
after that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, Fluent Motion Frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with uh, older game. Uh, don't use Anti-Lag 1, this one is not good. Don't use a Radiant Boost. Radiant Chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game. So first of all, display mode, I recommend to go with the full screen one. Make sure that you're playing native. I like to unlock my FPS. You just have those options. And honestly, just do unrestricted and lock it with another uh, software like MSI Afterburner or even NVIDIA. VSync at off. You don't want to add input lag in your game. And motion blur off also for better visibility. Now for super resolution sampling, when you open the game, you, you have DX11 and DX12. So I really recommend to use DX12 if you have like a, maybe a video card for the past four or five years. If your video card is really old, like 10 years ago, eight years ago, uh, run it in DX11. But also with DX12, you're getting DLSS and XESS. So honestly, that's pretty nice. Uh, I recommend to go with quality with DLSS. You're going to get a nice 10% boost in your FPS. This one is good. NVIDIA Reflex and Enable. I'm not a huge fan of frame generation in this game. You can feel the input lag. Uh, so if you have a 4000 or 5000 series and you really need those FPS, definitely do some testing. You also have FSR that I recommend to go at 66%. It's almost like the quality version. But honestly, uh, FSR also, you're getting the frame gen. That's pretty cool. But XESS in this game is pretty good. I recommend Ultra or Quality. It's a little bit better than FSR. So if you don't have the LSS, definitely test XESS for your upscaling. Now for your visual detail, I recommend to go uh, ambient occlusion at low. You just have two options. A nice 3% boost in your FPS. Tessellation, no, not really an impact on your FPS, so you can go with I with this one. Vegetation quality, lighting, go with medium. A nice 6% boost in your FPS. View distance, this one will tank your FPS. It's like 3 to 4% for each bracket. 
So my recommendation is go with medium. Effect quality and reflection quality at low. Uh, you're going to stabilize your FPS a lot with those options and the real-time sunlight at close. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my guide for this game. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I'll try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.